This is going to be the first in a series of videos where I explain some ideas of set theory. I will be basing myself mostly on this book, Set Theory, An Introduction to Independence Proofs, which is a graduate level textbook, but I'm going to make these videos accessible to those with no mathematical background. So we're going to be going through the book very slowly. The first thing I'm going to do is define what a set is. This definition is going to be very imprecise and we're going to come up with better later, but this is going to give us a good idea of what's going on. So um, Cantor, the first set theorist, said a set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects. Well-defined collection of distinct objects. So let's take this apart. The first thing is uh, a collection. So this is just the idea that we're taking a bunch of things and we're putting them together into one thing. The next thing is uh, well-defined. So that means that given an element, uh, the element is either in the set or it isn't. Um, and and uh, it, it's agreed upon. So the set of all good books is not a set because there's disagreement on what is and isn't a good book. And finally, uh, distinct objects. And so this means that the things that we put into our set have to be different. If you put the same thing in a set twice, it does not change the set. So for example, set containing A is equal to the set containing A and A. And we have a special word for these sets that only contain one element, and we call them singletons. Okay, now that we know what a set is, there's a couple of operations that we can do with them. And the first is the union. So it looks like a U, and it takes the elements of two sets and puts them together into one big set. So for example, set A unioned with the set B is equal to the set containing A and B. Another example, the set containing A or singleton A union the set containing A and B is equal to the set containing A and B because once again we got rid of the duplicates. Uh, another operation is the intersection which uh, takes only the elements that the two sets have in common. So the set containing A intersected with the set containing B is equal to the empty set, which you can also write as a zero with a line through it, just like that. Another example is set containing A and B intersected with the set containing B and C is equal to singleton B. Finally, we have the relative complement, um, which takes everything from a second set and takes it out of the first set. So uh, given a set a, B, C, we complement the set B, C from it, what we're left with is the singleton A. It's kind of like a minus sign for sets. Now that we have these operations defined, we can create some sets that are used very frequently in math. The first is the natural numbers. 
Now, I'm not going to define this set very precisely. I will include a link to a more precise definition. Um, but you will understand what I'm talking about. And the natural numbers is a set containing 0, it contains 1, it contains 2, contains 3, and so on. And so this is all put together in a set. The next set we can define is using the natural numbers, we can define the integers, which are the positive and negative natural numbers. So we're going to start by taking set n, natural numbers, and union it with the set of negative numbers. And I'm going to write that like this. I'm going to say it's the set of all negative x such that x is in n. So this is some new notation. Um, the curly brackets, once again, mean that I'm talking about a set. The bar reads as such that, and this E reads as is in. So when we read this all at once, we get this is the set of all negative x such that x is in n. Another thing we can build with this set builder notation is the set of rationals, Q. This is the set of all a over b such that a, a, and b are integers.